Namaste everyone and welcome to Wellness Mantra. In today's episode, we will see how one can alleviate uh, problems of the lungs, uh, such as bronchial problems, uh, an asthmatic trouble, uh, and how do you, in short, uh, expand your lungs capacity and use the best of your lungs. Um, well, the one thing that we all do is primarily breathe. And we all know the different types of breathing, the sectional breathings that we have learned earlier, the abdominal, thoracic and clavicular breathing, and uh, the full yogic breathing, which involves the entire lung capacity as you use all the frames of the lungs. Now, today we will look at how uh, certain asanas or certain stretches can help to expand the lungs region, thereby letting the lungs use its maximum or the best of its capacity. Uh, not just that, these asanas that we will be dealing with today also will help to stretch your abdominal muscles and internal organs, um, which means it will help to stretch your digestive organs and your reproductive organs, thereby uh, making them more healthier and supple. Mm, so let's check out what the asanas for today are. So before which, let's do some warm-ups. Ready? Stretch your leg out in front of you and sit in Dandasana. Dandasana is the staff posture. Slightly flex your feet forward and towards you. Forward and towards you. Forward towards you forward and towards you. Let's do those big circles with our legs. One, two, three, four, five. Let's do it the other way around. One, two, three, four, and five. Let's do the open close. So open, and shut. If you want to use your hands to support your back, please put them behind you. Open and shut. Open, shut. Try to maintain your knees on the ground. Open and shut. Open and shut. All right, bring your legs together. Let's do a little bit of knee flexing. Tighten your kneecaps and release them. So you can actually feel your kneecaps as you tighten them. So tighten your kneecaps, release. Tighten your kneecaps, release. Tighten your kneecaps and release. Tighten your kneecaps and release. All right, let's just bring our legs in, tighten it up and stretch it out before you land it on the floor. Pull your leg in, pull your knees into your chest, push it out and slowly drop it down. Pull your knee in, hug it tight to your chest, kick it out and drop it down. Pull your knee in, hug it, push it out and slowly drop it down. Pull your knee in, hug it, kick it out and slowly drop your leg. And one more round. One, tighten, lift and drop. That was fun. All right, just to stretch ourselves a little more, let's sit into Baddha Konasana. Please remember what I told you about Baddha Konasana. It's more essential to keep your back straight than to try and bring your legs closer. So if your back is straight only at this stage, keep it, maintain it there just as long as your back is straight and you discover your sitting bone, all right? And as you get better in your practice, try and keep pulling your legs in just as much as you can and as much as you're comfortable. Once you're at your maximum, start fluttering away like the butterfly. This will just help us stretch our hips before we get into our main asanas for today. Though the main asanas for today won't really help you stretch your hip out, uh, but this is good for a warm up. Let's breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and pull your hand to the opposite knee and turn back as you breathe out. Breathe in center, switch your hands to the opposite knee and turn back. 
giving your back a nice and fine twist. Again to the other side. Center. And one more time. All right, we're almost there. Just start to do a little bit of shoulder rotation. One, two, three, four. The other way around. So you go one, two, three, and four. Good job. All right. Let's get ready for the first asana for today. Today's first asana is the Vajrasana from the Dandasana that you are already in. Keep your back straight, nice and tall. Now slowly bend one leg and place it under your bottom. Right. Shift your weight to the other side and pull the other leg. You are now in Vajrasana. Vajrasana is the only asana like I told you earlier that will help aid digestion. The only asana that you are allowed to do after having a meal. So once you sit in Vajrasana, we will be doing what is called the Ushtrasana. Ushtrasana is a camel posture. Now what does Ushtrasana help us with? Um, Ushtrasana helps to stretch your abdominal and abdominal region thereby stretching your digestive and reproductive organs and ensuring that they stay healthy and supple. It also helps to stretch your shoulders backwards thereby allowing your chest to protrude and allowing your in, uh, lungs to use its best capacity. It is also beneficial for your thoracic region because you're bent backwards and your neck is strained. So where your thoracic gland is, it helps to uh, give a nice and gentle massage to your thoracic region. Ushtrasana can be a little complicated. So let's start with Ardha Ushtrasana or Half Ushtrasana. Um, like I said, camel posture. Do it at your own pace. Please try and see if you can do it. It is a quite, it's quite an advanced asana when it comes to a final stage of Ushtrasana. Uh, however, please observe caution. If you do have knee problems, sitting in Vajrasana is not meant for you. If you have a disc, uh, a slip disc or a very serious back problem or neck problem please refrain from doing this practice all right for the rest of you out there let's try and do the artha ushrasana so from vajrasana slowly come up onto your knees now slowly separate your legs very slightly keeping them parallel to each other once you're here you are slowly going to try and place your hands behind your back lower back like how you do the ardha chakrasana so put your fingers together try not to pull your thumb and strain your thumb as you hold make sure all your fingers are pointed forward slowly put your hands on your hip and slide it back as much as you can if you can meet both your wrists together wonderful now from here we're going to breathe in and go back just observe i cannot be talking when i do this asana so just observe me and then i'll tell you how to go through it step by step. Ardha Ushtrasana. Breathing in and going back. So that was Ardha Ushtrasana. What I just did was I slowly put my hands behind my back, tried to bend back like I do in Ardha Chakrasana and then slowly put my hands into 
my heels. Now when you do this, what you have to try and achieve is try and keep your leg parallel to the ground. So I mean perpendicular to the ground. So which means if your hip is leaning this way, you need to try and push it outwards until your thighs are perpendicular to the ground. So this now gives you a nice and fine stretch in your abdominal region, thereby enhancing the uh, suppleness in your digestive region and your reproductive region. It also helps to expand your chest as you stretch out your shoulders to the back and stretch your hands forward. So that is Ardha Ushtrasana. Now Ardha is half. Now if I have to do Ardha Ushtrasana with one hand, you must have already guessed that doing a complete Ushtrasana requires taking both the hands back. This is for advanced students or intermediate students. Uh, please observe caution as you practice this. Don't try uh, to do it if it's too hard for you to bend your back that much. Go slowly and for beginners, it's all right to actually have a slant in your leg than trying to push your leg out straight. So I'll show you how beginners can perform this. All right, let's do it together. Sitting in Vajrasana, please get ready, breathe normally, stay there for a few seconds, prepare your mind and breathe in as you come up. Gently place your palms on the side of your hands, I mean your hip and slide your hands behind. And from here, breathe in and start going backwards as you breathe in. So that was Ushtrasana. So as beginners, when you try and push your pull, your pull your palms into your heels, it is quite possible that your body slants slightly. This is perfectly all right. But once you achieve that stage where you can put your cup your palms into your heels and stay there, try and see if you can move your hip forward so as to make your thighs perpendicular to the ground. So that way you're giving your chest a nice expansion helping to use the best of your lung capacity, helping to alleviate any concerns of the lungs such as bronchial problems or asthma. Uh, for children who have asthma, this is one of the best asanas that can be performed because children are pretty flexible, they, their shoulders can go backwards, not, not like us adults who find it difficult to pull your shoulders backward. So they find it very exciting and it's like a play for them but highly beneficial for their uh, bronchial health. So uh, try and see if your children can practice this. This is very good for them. Now after the Artha Ushtrasana and Ushtrasana, it is essential to do a, a posture that will have a forward bend because we just did a backward bend. And the easiest forward bend as you sit in Vajrasana is the Shashankasana. So from there, as you sit here, gently slide down and go into Shashankasana. Rest in Shashankasana for a little while. Observe your chest and abdomen pressed against your thighs. Breathe normally. Feel the weight build up in your face. Feel the heaviness and pressure that you feel on your face. Stay there. Relax. Gently breathe in and come up. All right, now that we are already in Vajrasana, why don't we do another one, uh, one more asana, which will be helpful for the same thing, um, to elevate bronchial problems, asthmatic troubles, and generally breathing problems or shortness of breath. Now to perform this asana again, now that we are already here, from Vajrasana, we'll have to go down into Sukta Vajrasana or lying down, sleeping Vajrasana. So this asana also helps to tone your legs. If you have a neck or um, so 
see, uh, see, sorry, neck or spondylitic uh, issue, try and not practice this. Uh, if you have a serious knee problem, you may not be able to sit in Vajrasana or stretch your knee anywhere beyond. One thing that you have to remember is when you go down into this asana, it is essential to come back to Vajrasana before you release your legs and straighten out your legs. Because if you try to lie down and release your legs, you can hurt your knees. So try and please don't do that. All right, now Sutta Vajrasana will stretch your abdomen abdominal region, uh, make your uh, reproductive organs and your um, uh, digestive organs supple. It can also keep constipation at bay. This is advice for people who have constipation. You can actually drink three glasses of water and go into Sutta Vajrasana to help relieve uh, constipation. All right, so let's see how we can perform the Sutta Vajrasana. Sutta Vajrasana involves placing your the crown of your head on the ground. As you do this, there is a possibility that you feel slightly giddy because you're stretching out your neck and there's a lot of blood flow into your head. Please observe caution as you do this and please make sure that you are doing it on a mat. At no point shall the crown of your head rest on the bare ground. Please make sure you have a mat or a blanket to support the crown of your head as you place it on the mat. All right, now from Vajrasana, you're slowly going to slide back and lie down. From here, I'm going to place my head, the crown of my head, on the ground. I won't be able to talk at that posture. Please observe. Using the support of your elbow, please come up. Now, there is a variation for the Sutta Vajrasana. If you can't place the crown of your head on the ground, you can go lie down flat. This will also still help your chest to expand. Let's try and see what this variation looks like. This is relaxes your neck region as you do this variation but as you notice your chest is completely expanded you feel a nice stretch in your abdominal region it does help to strengthen your ankles and your legs The one thing you cannot do from this asana is to try and stretch your legs out. So stay there. It may not be the most comfortable thing to lie down on your legs like this. But it is essential that you come back the same way that you went down. So using the support of your elbows, slowly pull yourself up. And because you did a backward bend, it is essential to go down into Shashankasana and relax. Stay in Shishankasana for a while, relax. So that was Supta Vajrasana. We had performed two variations of the Sutta Vajrasana. We also did the Ushtrasana. Everything sitting in Vajrasana as a beginner's posture from the Dandasana that you were in. Um, so like I told you, all this is highly beneficial for your abdomen. It is beneficial for your internal organs such as your digestive system and your uh, reproductive system. It also helps to activate your thoracic gland. So if you have a thoracic problem or if you have a thigh thyroid issue it also helps to um, uh, ensure regulate regulate your thyroid glands to an extent um, so good luck practicing i hope you enjoyed today's session and i'll see you soon until then goodbye and have a lovely day mm -hmm.